Dan Riskin. Dan, Planet K218b really rolls off the tongue. What more do we know about it? <laughs> Yeah, we know it needs a better name, yeah. so that's one thing. So I'm sure they'll get on it. Uh, they tried to give uh, worlds like this a name. They call them Hycean planets. Like, the beginning is supposed to sound like hydrogen, and the second half is supposed to be like ocean, so Hycean. I don't like that word at all, but maybe it'll stick. Uh, but this is an ocean world. It's, it's a water world, if their calculations are correct. Much bigger than the Earth, uh, but just covered in water. No, no indication that it might have continents. Although, it, you know, you can't rule that out. But the idea here is that when they take a good look at this thing with the James Webb Space Telescope, the way you see a planet that far away is that you don't actually see the planet. You see its shadow as it crosses the star that it's going around. And so you're actually looking at the star, and the star gets dim for a second, and then it gets bright again. And when it's dim for a second, that's when the planet presumably is crossing in front of it. And if you look at the change of color of the star as the planet passed in front of it, the change in wavelengths of light that are reaching you tell you something about the molecules that are in the atmosphere of that planet. So, I mean, you were talking about like a, a 10,000th of the signal, you know, just a tiny fragment, but they've taken this measurement over and over and over and their calculations show that the atmosphere of this planet seems to have uh, the chemicals in it, dimethyl sulfide or uh, dimethyl disulfide, that in, on Earth are only ever made by living things. They're, they're, we don't know of any geological process that can make those other than life. It's possible there's something we don't know about going on over there, but a, a, a more likely scenario or the most likely scenario to explain that chemical being on that planet is that maybe there's something living there that's making it the way things on Earth do. Okay, Dan, these seem like very, very preliminary findings. What happens next? Yeah, I mean, so you can take better and better looks. I mean, I think right now the big thing in the States is to secure the kinds of funding for basic science because with the cuts that NASA looks to be facing, uh, following up on this just doesn't become an option. Uh, if you take away the funding for basic science and focus instead on other kinds of missions, uh, you lose the ability to make these kinds of discoveries. And I think the possibility of finding life on another planet, I mean, there's, there's no greater achievement that you can imagine for space scientists to make. So uh, I hope that, uh, that we, we see a change in the winds uh, down south and that, and that things change so that basic science is a little bit more uh, secure in the long term. But if that basic science is put in place and, and, and if it can, can continue, then it's going to be about building different telescopes that can take different looks at it. This is too far away for us to go check it out, but uh, it does give us something to look for also around other planetary systems. Yeah, no one's quite hopping on a plane to go to planet K218b. Um, Dan, just talk to us, uh, to put this into context for us, how rare of a finding is something like this? Well, I mean, what we really want is to look through a telescope and see a, a flying saucer with aliens in it waving back at us and for them to say, hey, it's us, and us to say, oh, good, we finally found you, and then we have a there conversation. You are. That's, that's the dream, right? We're not getting that anytime soon. The, the space is vast, but space also has a lot of different places where life could show up. And so we believe that there very likely are places out there where things are walking around, but you can't see them from this far away. So what we look for instead are the chemical signatures of life. We would look for the kinds of molecules that exist on Earth that are produced by living things and see if you can spot those in other places. And, and dimethyl sulfide is this sort of magic molecule that occurs very rarely on Earth, but wherever it occurs, it's being made by living things. And from their calculations, these concentrations of this stuff on this faraway planet seem to be about a thousand times higher than what we have on Earth. And so that suggests you know, something's putting it there what? Is it a living thing? Or is it some geological process we don't know about? Or is it something beyond those two answers that we can't even imagine yet because we just can't get our heads around it? And that's the beauty of space, is that's also a very real possibility. So fascinating. Lots of big questions that I'm sure many people will be wanting to answer. CTV science and technology expert Dan Riskin, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you.